and welcome to Short and Sweet Revision. This is our final story from the um, anthology, so very exciting. We are. Um, we've added a little address here for our Twitter uh, feed. Uh, our Twitter name is Ask, Ask You and Fern. Uh, please follow us. We won't follow you back, but we will be putting uh, links to revision sites on there. Um, and subscribe to our feed here on the Short and Sweet uh, revision site as well. That'd be great to have as many subscribers and followers as possible. Yeah, and we've got to say a big thank you to all those people that have given us some comments or asked. Yep. Ask. We're going to do our best to um, put out as many revision videos as possible. But yeah, we, we hope, are, we hope it, they're useful. It's getting close to the exams now. Now yeah. May is here and we know the literature exam is coming up very soon. We will be doing um, videos on the poems as well from the anthology. Uh, so look out for them and we'll let you know when they're going to be uploaded onto YouTube. Yeah, brilliant. Should we make a start on yeah, this, this, week's, cracking, this week's story? Here we go. It's something old, something new by, are you ready for this, Leila Abu Leila? Yes, I, apologies <laughs> if we are not pronouncing yeah, that correctly. Not, not the best with that. Okay, so what we're going to be doing today is revising the key features of the story. And again, we're going to apply our knowledge uh, to an exam-style question using peel paragraphs. Okay, getting used to this now, I think. Yes. And I think you, uh, a lot of people are finding it quite useful um, as a revision guide. Yeah. So well, let's work our way through this one. All right, so we'll do a quick warning, actually. This is going to be a little bit longer uh, than yes. a normal video. So please just bear with it. It's just because this short story... It's actually it is quite a quite long story. Yes, it is quite long. And like we've said before, you need to make sure that you read these stories more than once. Um, my group yesterday, when we were re uh, reading and working on Anil, were confused by who's who in the story. Yeah. So you need to know, you need to be comfortable with who you're writing about in the exam. Yes, yeah, so make sure you uh, read it through a couple of times. That's right. Okay, let's okay. get going. So the plot summary. Um, this story begins with a man, uh, well, it doesn't begin with him, but a man from Edinburgh meets a lady far from Khartoum, Khartoum, which is in the Sudan, in the African Africa continent, on, yeah. yeah, and the man travels to meet her family. So the beginning of the story is him stepping off the, the plane in, um, in the Sudan, and he's arranged, they're arranging a marriage, okay, and a dowry has been paid, which means money has exchanged hands, which was um, as expected from their culture. That's right. At the beginning of the story, we begin to uh, think, we, we begin to wonder what their relationship actually is, um, whether they are friends or we assume kind of boyfriend and girlfriend, don't mm, we? Yeah. Um, but there's, you know, with that, I mustn't kiss you, no, she laughed, you mustn't, kind of, you know, we know then that it is, um, um, you know, they are in a relationship of some kind. Yeah, I mean, straight away at the beginning of the story, yeah, we do have all these questions, don't we, this report yeah, conversation yeah. here. Or did you have a good trip? Are you hungry? And from this, we get to pick up that the, there is um, some sort of cultural differences because he says stuff like, um, I mustn't kiss you. That's right. So you begin to think, well, is there something in the culture or that, that they are not allowed to kiss? Or, yeah. And, and we find that out, don't we, when the family are there all the time. Yeah, it all reveals itself, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. Um, her brother is introduced, not by name, but her brother is introduced fairly early on in the story. And the way it's written, where it says he was lanky with a hard done by expression, uh, he looked irritated, makes me, th makes me wonder if we're, if we're meant to like him. And I no. don't think we are meant to like no. the brother early on in the story. No, okay. okay. But we're going to go into this in more detail, but again, as usual, let's have a little look at the, the author. Okay, so Leila Abu Leila um, was born in Cairo. Now, the interesting thing here is that she's actually uh, grew up in Khartoum uh, in Sudan, and she married someone from Aberdeen, and, uh, yeah, so herself, yes. she almost is reflected, her journey is reflected in the story almost. That's right, the yeah. place is Scotland yeah. and the Sudan. Yeah. Um, and she found comfort in writing about her homeland, and, mm. and that keeps the, her link, I suppose, right, is setting yeah. her story but in. But the setting in place is so important in this story. It is. And, you know, it's so descriptive, especially yeah. um, in, in the Sudan. So... Perhaps this is reflected about her, her wanting home comforts, almost. And our question at the end is to do with setting yes, today, it is. isn't it, the it last as well? Question. Yeah. Um, also worth noting is that she talks about geographical and cultural displacement. Oh. Now, Miss, shall I ask you a question here? What does uh, displacement mean? People who have moved or been forced to move from one country, usually their home country, 
and they're displaced, so they've gone somewhere else. Yeah. Refugees, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. And link into this cultural just d uh, displacement, again, it's, a, it's moving into a different cultural setting, different ideals, different um, beliefs. And we see this, first of all, her in Edinburgh, yes. and, and him coming over to the Sudan. Yes. Yeah. And we, do, we don't hear about her time in Edinburgh, though, really, no. do we? It's more his, you know, the, the, how he reacts and changes to life in the Sudan. Yeah. And again, the bottom, bottom uh, line here that we've highlighted, the stories in the collection are concerned with intercultural love and marriage. There you go, straight away. This story is about intercultural love and marriage. It is. And this forbidden love and arranged marriages. Yeah, important it is arranged well. marriage. Yeah. Okay, great. So... Uh, moving on, we thought we'd write you uh, a list of unfamiliar words. Okay, we'll let you look through these. These are just the um, definitions of some of the words in the story that, you know, that there's no glossary to tell you this, so we yeah. put it there for you. And again, we won't try and pronounce no, them all. We're no. not the best for that. Okay, uh, moving on. Setting. Again, this is the most, perhaps one of the key prominent things about this story is the setting. So it's set in two very different locations. Um, the Sudan and Edinburgh, and as you can see, just looking at these pictures, yeah, it's very different. Very different. Yeah. Um, straight away you pick up on things like the weather, the heat, obviously the, the housing, just looking at that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, everything is different, and it's very, very flat. He says, doesn't he, at one point about sand drifts, and it's uh, very, very flat, whereas in Edinburgh, the most famous point is, um, what's it called, is it Arthur's Seat, which is the hill that a lot of people go up to give you a fantastic yeah. view over the city and the of Edinburgh. Higher up yeah. as well. So yeah. yeah. Um, okay, and again, um, if we're thinking about time and place, um, we have flashbacks for Edinburgh. So Edinburgh, Edinburgh is in the past, um, and he is presently in Khartoum. In Khartoum. That's in right. Sudan. Good. And the busy, Khartoum is a very, very busy place. Yeah. And we see that at the bottom of page 41. Uh, where it says, where it, when he's in the car, it was like a ride in a fun fair. The windows wide open, uh, voices, noises, car horns, people crossing the road at random. Lots of punctuation in there, and that's written to show mm. the busyness yeah. of the place. Using that list formation is like yeah. creating a busy atmosphere. Speeds up. Yeah when, you're, yeah, when you're saying it. Good. Okay, so moving on, point of view. So the point, who is telling us the story? Who is the voice? It's written in the third person narration. And um, from, we thought, from the man's perspective. Yes, I think it's through his perspective. We're told about her, but it is it is more his story. Yeah, I mean, yeah. the first line, here we go, short sentence, straight in there, her country disturbed him. I think that's very fast. As an opening sentence, that really does, you, you want to, you know, the questions you want to ask, why, yeah. what country, who is she, yeah. you know, what, what is, is the relationship? What is the story about? Yeah, why is he disturbed? Yeah. Yeah. And then we, and then uh, moving on from that, and, and then we're kind of jumping around a bit. But the fact that he's talking about a human bone, the country disturbing human bone. We've got this, these strange yes. references right at the beginning, yeah. which it's hooking you in there, okay, and leaving a little bit to the imagination. It's a good opening th uh, because the landscape is mentioned. Uh, the landscape of Khartoum is mentioned straight away. Yeah. So it's obviously, if it, I think, if a question comes up about setting, mm. uh, this could be quite a good one to do because, Definitely. yeah. Okay. okay. Um, character. So again, characterization, you need to think about physical description, dialogue, action, and the comments from the author. So the main characters within this story, we have the man who mm -hmm. we have. Scottish. Have, yeah, but we have no idea what his name is. No, so. no. Woman. Yes, we don't know much. Well, we're told a little bit about each of them, but yeah. not really to, they're not really developed as characters, and I don't think that's what is meant to be in no. this story. It's what happens to them and, and the difference in the cultures that's important yeah. here. Yeah, it's not about their names. And then we've got the brother. Yeah. Miss, you've already mentioned the brother who perhaps we're not supposed to like. Yeah. I don't think we are supposed to no. like him, but towards the end, I think you perhaps do like him a bit more, but you have to kind of think that the brother is is following his customs, yeah. his traditions. Maybe it's not like him, maybe it's understand him more. You yes. understand him it, rather than... Yeah. yeah, you don't have to like, I suppose, yeah. but usually when you're reading something, you do form an opinion of those yeah. characters. This next one's interesting, the uncle yeah. who, who k sings the cricket song, yeah. and he <laughs> looks like Bill Cosby. Cosby. <laughs> people might not know who Bill Cosby Do you think people will know who Maybe Bill no. Cosby is? When I was teaching to my class, I thought about doing an impression, but I don't think I should. Can you do an impression no, of Bill Cosby? <laughs> 
<laughs> well, you no, you can really Google not. Bill Cosby yeah. and see. It's very then. funny. Very okay. Funny. Okay. Yeah. So he's the uncle, and again, we've got lots of people mentioned within the story. Um, un- what was it? Aunts, cousins. Groups of people, yeah. isn't it? Rather than have, th- and that I think that adds to the. Um, busyness of the of the place yes. itself that everybody congregates in one house yeah uh, or, or or the brother's flat for the yeah. wedding and everybody's there nieces nephews aunts uncles everybody and i think it also highlights the difference between their cultures i mean a bit later on when he finally meets her and he goes round to their house he and when he finds that they live in you know he talks about how oh she's never had a desk a packet of biscuits because mm. they've, they've been living in this family unit which is perhaps very different from between him and mm. his and his mum and his dad and it's funny the way they're described like the uncle's in an old string hammock in yeah, the corner snoozing, and, um, or and eavesdropping or eavesdropping yeah, yeah. Uh, so it it is. It's a very very different life yeah. for Oh, and him. and and the reference to the Godfather. You know when they go out. Oh yes. And they're walking in the hills, and he's like, he felt like he was in the Godfather because, uh, apart from the etiquette of the fact that they can't be alone before they're married, it's also the the sheer amount of um, family that are involved in this. You know. Yes. Yeah, everybody's um, involved. Yeah. And that's how it how it is. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Should we go on to the next yeah, one? We'll go. So, symbolism and interpretation. Mm. Something old, something new. I bet most of you have heard that somewhere, isn't it? It's the, it's the, the saying uh, at a wedding when the bride was something old, something new, something borrowed, something blue. Yeah. So, quite a fitting title. And, a, you know, you need to consider the title of these stories. Yeah. All of them, actually. You know, what is the importance of the title? Yeah. What is the importance of the opening and the ending? Do they link back? Link back yeah. to the title. And obviously, something old, something new, um, in terms of the wedding, is meant to represent um, the bride having something from her old life and taking yes. it into a new life. And again, this, this relationship is about them coming together... Um, as something new. As something new. And it yeah. is something new, not only because they are from different worlds, almost, aren't mm-hmm. they? And it is something new. Mm. I like the way the Nile is described, yes. the Blue Nile. Yes, I, I do like this um, bit. But, I mean, it is beautiful, but he noticed that the river's flow was forceful, not innocent, not playful. Um, You know, any river, I suppose you could apply that to any river, but the Nile always seems to be this gentle flowing river. But he's surprised by its force, by its... um, It doesn't look quite as peaceful, maybe, as it And the important thing with the Nile is that um, they have two very different perspectives about the Nile. She she is described as she was Mm. proud of her Nile. Her Nile. She says it's hers. Yeah, around line 47. Okay, and the Nile, obviously, we know is a very famous river. It's almost like their landmark. Do you know, like in Edinburgh, you'd have the castle, you'd have, yes. you know, things like that. And the Nile is something that represents the Sudan, and she is proud of that. And it's their lifeline. I yeah. mean, everything would be would come to on the, the on the Nile. Right. Yeah. Read between the lines now. Here, could this represent their culture, their background? She she's proud of the Nile. This is her yeah. homeland. This is where she comes from. Okay, whereas he. He sees that it's not innocent or playful or false. Mm. He, he's cautious. He mm. sees perhaps the hidden um, dangers to 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 the, yes. the place. I think he, he does because as soon as he gets there, he's frightened because the yeah. car windows are open, and he's afraid somebody's yeah. going. And and then of course later on he has his rucksack yeah, exactly. um, slashed. Uh, religion, Miss, as well here. I mean, it's yeah. it's the theme of religion is is throughout the story. And he's a convert to Islam. That's very important. We haven't mentioned we that. We haven't mentioned he is that. converted. So yes. when, From, well, in Edinburgh, he converted, yeah. Yeah, so that is really important because he was Catholic. So he, she asked him at one point, do you believe in God? And yes, he does. And for him to, to convert from Catholicism to Islam is a big storyline, isn't it, in, yeah. in this story? And um, I think one of the, the key things with the religion is that he did convert whilst he was in Edinburgh, but almost as soon as he's got here, it's like he's, he's totally new to the, the culture, yes. the religion, all over again, because I don't think he was fully prepared. And I like the opening, if I refer back to it, I really like this opening, when it says, and now walk through a blaze of hot air from the aeroplane steps. I almost feel like, you know when you open the oven and a blaze of hot air yes, hits you in the face? Like, yeah. It's like he stepped off the aeroplane and everything has just Wham! Hit him in the face. Everything's Culture, changed. Culture, religion, everything. Yeah. Okay? And yeah. he was not prepared for this. No. All right. 